Good morning and welcome to Rockledge Presbyterian Church's online streaming service. I hope that you are safely tucked in at home, protected from the winds and the rains of the hurricane. We are the friendly church on the river that welcomes all, and we are glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. Today we continue the format that we normally use in our 8.30 worship service, and today we'll also be celebrating communion. So if you haven't already, please be sure to go and get your bread and your juice or wine so that you can be ready to celebrate communion with us later in the service. For prayer requests and important announcements, please continue to refer to your mail or email bulletin. But there are a few things that I would like to lift up to you now. In terms of joys and concerns, we would like to lift up to you Phil Rose Sr., who had surgery at Rockledge Regional. He's home, and doctors believe that they got 99% of his cancer. Um, Ellie will be going in for some testing this next week. Please keep her in your prayers. And Dave Mann, praise God, seems to be appearing well, uh, responding well, excuse me, favorably to his new medication. Also, we have a few announcements. You all have been waiting patiently for us to go back to in-person worship, and we are trying desperately to provide that for you. So on August 30th, if all goes well, we will have worship in the courtyard at 8.30 a.m. It will be limited to 30 attendees so that we can be sure that everybody can be socially distanced. So that, for that reason, we would like you to pre-register with the church office so that we can know how many to expect. You will be required to wear your mask to attend the service but we look forward to being back together. Also, just a reminder that we have our Tuesday evening prayer service via Zoom. It's at 6.30, and uh, the office can provide you with that link. Pastor Sandy is on vacation with her husband this week, but the weekly prayer bench is still in operation. Uh, Jim will be um, manning the bench on Wednesdays from 12.30 to 1.30 if you would like to stop by and receive prayer. We have the Wednesday evening lectionary study, uh, and that also you can get the Zoom link from the office. And we're starting a new study for Sunday School, uh, which began this morning, if you're watching Sunday at 11, um, but it will be continuing for the next three weeks, and it's on Proverbs, Pathways to Wisdom by Dominic Hernandez. And last but not least, the Community Outreach Children Hunger Program. Um, if you are able to help with preparing box lunches or drive-by handout um, with masks and distancing required, please contact Jennifer Forrester. And we have a couple of um, thank yous. We would like to thank um, Brian and Colin for taking their precious personal time to do major trimming of the playground trees. They did an amazing job and we're grateful. They also pressure washed the sidewalks, the entries and the windows in the courtyard. Sparkling clean, good job. And a message from our counters, bookkeeper Ruth and treasurer Steve, please provide separate checks for your pledge offering and charity or fund donations. Please specify on each check your intentions and then the pledge or offering or charity or fund or in the memo line. Let me say that again because that was not very clear. In the memo line, either put that as your pledge or offering or identify which um, charity fund you would like it to go to. Thank you for that. We have one other um, concern and that's for Christopher Skidmore. Um, we ask that you keep him in your prayers. Oh, and I'm forgetting. We have an anniversary coming up on August 3rd for Bob and Kim Trujillo. David Ward Sr.'s birthday is, was yesterday on Saturday. Nancy Muffick's birthday is today, and Pam Higgins' birthday is August 6th. So happy birthday and happy anniversary to all. Let us worship God.
connects to Jesus to God, one another, and the world, let us call ourselves to worship. All who hunger gather gladly. We come to feast on the life giving word. Here, love abounds and grace overflows. Here, blessings multiply as gifts are shared. Come. Let us pour ourselves out in prayer and praise, and, and open ourselves to renewal and rest. Our opening hymn, Come to the Waters, was especially created to go along with the theme of a conference Cheryl attended several years ago. When she selected the Isaiah passage for our service today, she remembered the song. I will sing the lead on the chorus, and you are welcome to sing the echo. I will sing the first verse, and Jim will sing the second. Please join with us in singing them from your homes. Let us sing and come to the waters. Open our hands to share freely and generously 
and stretch our hearts to new expressions of love. Hear our confessions as we pray The waters of our baptism flowing down on each of us, providing forgiveness of our sins. Do you feel them? Friends, hear the good news. The God who challenges us is also the God who encourages us. The God who confronts us is also the God who accepts us. Be assured that the God is with us even now, accepting, guiding, and forgiving. Thanks be to God. Let's sing together our response of praise. Amen, we praise your name. you shall run to you 
because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The New Testament reading is found in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. At the end of chapter 13, Jesus is rejected by the people in his hometown of Nazareth. And because that they don't believe he is more than the son of Joseph, we are told Jesus does not do many deeds of power. Then as chapter 14 begins, we hear the story of John the Baptist's beheading at the hands of Herod Antipas. Then immediately before our passage, Jesus learns of his death. He is forlorn and seeks to retreat and grieve. But his followers have other ideas. Hear the telling of the feeding of the 5,000 from Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they can go into the villages and buy some food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Several years ago, I was conducting research for my doctoral degree. I was interviewing the high school students serving on our Presbyterian's Youth Council about their experience of communion. We had a focus group gathered specifically to talk about how they would celebrate the sacrament if they could plan it. I asked them to tell me what stories from the Bible they would choose to go along with the celebration. And one of the stories was the feeding of the 5,000. When I asked them why, they told me because everyone was welcomed and everyone was fed with food to spare. Then I asked them who might have a story from his or her life that would reflect that same theme. One of the young girls who had only become a Christian a few years prior told me the story of a person who quote unquote stayed away from anything the church would approve of. The pers person was making really bad choices and not living a decent lifestyle, her words. One Sunday, this person just wanted to hang out with her, so she invited the person to come to church. It happened to be Communion Sunday, and after receiving the elements, the guest she brought was filled with emotion and shed tears at the experience of being received with love by Jesus Christ and the community of people gathered around the table with her. The young girl told me the person was actually her mom. The teenage girl had lived with her grandparents almost all her life and knew virtually nothing about her parents except they had been unfit to care for her. Does it surprise any of us that the spirit of our risen Lord could touch a life through simple elements like bread and grape juice even during a service of remembrance of love. She had indeed received the gifts of God for the people of God. Both our 
scripture readings today speak to us about God's gift. They are revealed through food and food metaphors. In our Old Testament passage, the Israelites were a society based on working the soil. They bartered goods with one another. But the Babylonian economic system they were thrust into was based on money, coins, and they had learned how to survive and many had even thrived in that place. Like a carnival vendor, God calls the thirsty people to come to the waters. Those with no money were invited to come, buy, and eat. Now how does that work if you have no money? God is inviting his chosen people back. Jerusalem is being restored. They're being encouraged to return to their homeland and into the loving arms of the sovereign God. They are asked to set aside their yearning to buy things like they would in Babylonian society, things that do not satisfy. So put yourself in their place. They've lived in exile for 45 years. A generation has passed, and many of those being asked to return home may never have been to Jerusalem. What's more, they may not remember or even know about the God of Israel unless their parents and grandparents had been faithful in telling them about God. And what's up with this absentee, or seemingly absentee, divine parent, expecting them to trust that they should leave the place where they're comfortable for a place they will have to begin again and rebuild? But God's message is delivered loud and clear. Come to me. Listen so that you may live. God's promises to make with them a lasting covenant like the one made with King David. One where the people were experienced the steadfast love that David had known. The food is the word of God. The food that has real life-giving value. A gift of God for the people of God. Now fast forward to the story of Jesus' retreat to the wilderness in a boat. He wanted time alone to allow for grieving the death of his cousin John. But the people heard he had gone and they followed him on foot. By the time he pulled his boat ashore, the crowd was already gathered. He healed the sick until nightfall and the disciples became worried about feeding what had to be a crowd of about 10,000 people by the time he counted the men and the women and the children. How in the world would they find enough food in this deserted place? The disciples' solution was to just send everyone to the villages to get their own food. But you know the story. Jesus tells the disciples to feed them. They find five loaves and two fish. Jesus blesses them, and all are fed until they're full. And what's more, there are 12 baskets of leftovers collected after all had eaten. We'll be coming to the table shortly to receive communion. And right before I serve the elements, I will say the gifts of God for the people of God. As I was preparing this communion meditation, I got to thinking about what gifts we could ruminate on as we engage in this service of remembrance and thanksgiving. I bet your minds are already coming up with ideas. But here are some that come to mind for me based on our scripture passages. First, we are God's covenant people. God promises to love us and provide for us in return for our adoration and obedience. We even say that the cup is the new covenant in Christ's blood. We automatically become recipients of these promises when we call Jesus our Lord. There's no more amazing gift of God for the people of God than Jesus' death and resurrection, providing a return to wholeness for us in relationship to God, what we call salvation. Another gift is the life-giving word of God. When we celebrate communion, you may notice that it doesn't happen without a sermon or message. As Presbyterians, we believe the word and the sacrament must be served up together. We're told in the Isaiah passage, 
that this gift of God for the people of God is more valuable than the shiny golden objects money can buy, and that it is by far more satisfying and sustaining. A third gift we find in the gospel passage might go unnoticed as we get caught up in the miracle of the feeding. But Jesus, despite his sadness and weariness, feels compassion for the people. We're told he cures the sick until late into the evening. This gift of God for the people of God is Jesus' power to heal. We have the ability to enter into the presence of Christ at this table to experience the balm of healing of our bodies, our minds, our relationships. The fourth gift is the authority Christ gave to his disciples. Jesus didn't just say to his disciples, okay, just step aside, I'll take care of this. No, he tells them that the people need not go away. You give them something to eat. Through the Holy Spirit, the gift of God for the people of God is that we are all empowered to feed Christ's sheep. Not only are we given the authority to do so, we are provided with whatever it takes to care for God's people. The last gift I'm going to mention is abundance. The gospel story is so incredible because Jesus takes what the disciples provide and blesses it. And whether it's multiplied by a blessing miracle or because of an amazing cheering miracle on the crowd's part, there is so much that everyone is fed. But God doesn't do anything halfway. The people are not only fed, they eat until they are full. And there are 12 baskets of food collected afterwards. The gift of God for the people of God is abundance. As Christians, we need to turn away from a scarcity mentality where we think there's not enough for everyone, that we have to compete with and outmaneuver and overpower others in order to get enough. With an attitude toward abundance, we know there is enough for all. We will all be fed and there will be more than needed. So how does this all apply to our lives today? I don't know about you, but I have had enough of this time of seclusion. I want this pandemic to be over and I want it over now. Jesus seemed to do well with his time in the desert, but I am not as great at it. I think it felt okay for me until we began reopening and then the spread of the virus took off. For my husband Bill and I, that meant hunkering back down at home there are days I feel downright cranky about what it feels like in this world that seems to be unraveling before my eyes. How about you? So let's just think a moment of how the list above of the gifts of God for the people of God might lift our spirits and give us something to hold on to as we endure this time of isolation and distancing. First, we must remember that God's love for us is everlasting and ever-present. We might feel a little like the Babylonian exiles, wondering where God is in all of this. I challenge you each day to identify one place where you have seen God. For example, I find God's handiwork in our ability to work and pray and worship and fellowship through technology, strangely enough, and I'm thankful for it. Embrace God's love for you wherever you find it. We have the bread of life, Jesus Christ, whose story in the Bible feeds us with the life-giving word of God. So don't be afraid to open your Bible and engage in scripture reading and devotional time. So often I find that scripture speaks to the very thing that is challenging me. I suggest the Psalms. They cover the whole range of emotions. And God is okay with us celebrating with him and also with us complaining to him. And if you really want to lament for a while, sit with Job. Whatever passages you ponder upon, 
be thankful God speaks to us through the word. God has given us human agency to act on God's behalf. Have you ever lived in a time where there's been more need for healing, whether it's physical, spiritual, or emotional? Call or write a note to someone who's living alone, or collect food from neighbors like the foresters did and take it to the sharing center. Jesus told his disciples then to feed his people, and now, we have the same charge. This is a time to utilize the gifts given us by the Spirit, to share God's love with others. And we need to shift our focus from scarcity to abundance. Rather than thinking of all the things that we don't have or can't do, maybe it's time to consider all the blessings that we do have. Linda Rose shared in our Zoom Sunday School class that she wrote one thing each day on a piece of paper that she was grateful for. And she would drop it in a jar, and she did this practice for a year. At the end of the year, she opened the jar, and she read every single note, and was able to see just how God had worked in her life and had blessed her abundantly throughout the year. Let's take the time to be thankful. As we approach this table to join together in the celebration of the Lord's Supper, think back to our opening story of the teenager who extended an invitation to come to church. Then the Holy Spirit and the people gathered showed her a welcome that did not depend on what type of lifestyle she was living. They extended the gift of hospitality and of love. As we gather at the table, I'm going to allow a couple minutes for you to take the elements and then sit and consider the gifts of God you have received. Take that time to remember and be grateful. Come and eat what is good and delightful and satisfying. Gifts money can't buy. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the triune God. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and cup of his salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Let us join in singing the first two verses of our communion hymn, All Who Hunger, Gather Gladly.
Let us pray. You have fed us, Lord, and we are grateful. Allow us to respond this day and the days to come. With hearts made ready, eyes made open, hands made strong, and feet made willing to do your will in this place and in all the places to which you call us. Amen. Let's join together in the final verse of our communion hymn.
We pray that the gifts that we have given to you of our time, talent, and treasure are indeed pleasing to you. And even more than that, we pray that like the fish and the loaves, you will take it and bless it and multiply it so that it can be used here in our church community, in the community of Rockledge and in Brevard County, and even around the world. We ask all this in your name. You've heard earlier the prayers that we have, the joys and the concerns. So let's engage now in the prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of the covenant, we thank you for your everlasting love. Who are we that we deserve such loving care? Lord, hear our silent prayers of thankfulness for the ways we experience your love. in our lives right now. A hurricane, a pandemic, unrest, and even violence. Lord, here are some of the prayers for protection and comfort during these unsettling times. Our church is yours, Christ. We are your people, and we await your leading. Lord, hear our silent prayers for guidance and a setting out of your mission for us as a community of faith. We are carrying concerns for so many people, some who need healing, some who need a release from their anxiety, some who are grieving all sorts of losses. Lord, you know their needs. Hear our silent prayers of intercession. We are so blessed to have had Jesus live amongst humanity to teach us through the word how to pray. Hear us as we pray aloud the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you join me in singing or sending him, God be with you till we meet again.
it is time now to leave the comfort of our sanctuary, whatever that is right now. Maybe it's your home office, your living room, a bedroom, wherever it is. It's time to go now, go out into the world. And I ask you to be on the lookout for the gifts of God, for the people of God. See where it is that you, exceed, that you see tangible expressions of God's love for you. And also be thinking of the ways you can share tangible expressions of God's love with others. And go knowing that you go with the strength of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the stirring motivation and energy of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen.